So here we're giving a quick introduction to solving equations using Python. We'll look at solving linear equations and then a single nonlinear equation and a single unknown and then several nonlinear equations and several unknowns. For a system like AX equals B, a linear system, we need to do the following. First, we define the matrix A and the array B and then the functions that we use are x equals np.linalg.solve where we pass a and b as the matrix and array as needed where here np is uh, numpy so for instance if we had this a matrix and this b matrix of ones and we're looking to solve for the x's then we would import numpy as np and define our a matrix, define our B matrix, and then the function to, to use is np.linalg.solve A and B. And then we can print X to see what the values are. There are many other linear algebra uh, functions that are available, and we can see those if we open this link. Uh, dot product, inner product, outer product, um, QR decompositions, uh, singular value decompositions, eigenvalues, uh, norms, matrix norms, condition numbers, many of the standard and important linear algebra operations are available and um, including of course solving equations. In this case it's a uh, this will work for a dense system of equations, but there's different kinds of solvers that are available depending on the specific details of the problem that we have. So again, np.linalg.solve, fairly straightforward to do this. Um, for nonlinear equations, let's look at a single nonlinear equation in a single unknown. We've seen before that when we're solving systems like this, the first step is to take whatever problem we're given and put it in the form f of x equals zero. We know the function f and we want to find the value of x that gives f of x equals zero. In Python we can use the built-in solvers using the following steps. First we define the function f of x, then we set an initial guess for x, and then we use the solver uh, function that is provided and we use that from a library, in this case it's the scipy.optimize library and we can do from scipy.optimize import optimize and then we can call the function like uh, x equals optimize f solve f comma x zero. In this case f is the function that we're trying to solve and we pass that function as an argument and x0 is the initial guess. So for example we can solve f of x equals x squared minus 5 equals 0 and we're looking for the value of x that solves this equation. Uh, here I've modified this, imp uh, this import command slightly from scipy.optimize import fsolve and I guess I meant here to say from scipy dot optimize import f solve but uh, anyway from scipy dot optimize import f solve and then we can use this f solve function first thing we need to do once we have f solve available is to define the function so we just do simply def f of x and then return x squared minus five then we set an initial guess here I'm calling it x zero pick something here I'm choosing one and then we go x equals f solve, pass it the name of the function and the uh, initial guess and then we can print out the solution x and also we can evaluate the function to verify that it's essentially zero and we can see that yes we get x is 2.236 and f of x is nearly zero to within uh, mach machine precision we can find the other root of the function by changing our initial guess. 
So here I guessed x0 is 1, and it gave me a value of 2.236. If I choose x0 is minus 1, and then call f solve again, then I get the other root, which is minus 2.236. So it's symmetric about the 0 point. So again, the approach is define the function, define an initial guess, and then call the uh, solve routine. This is exactly the same uh, major steps as we use in nearly every language. This is uh, using very similar syntax as we would use in MATLAB. The procedure is the same as we saw in Excel, where we need to define a function in, in some uh, uh, cell, and then uh, define an initial guess and use the built-in uh, solver command. <coughs> We can extend this in a natural way to multi-dimensional equations, that is, situations where we have several equations and several unknowns. And we can solve this by a direct extension. Everything here for 1D is the same, except now we uh, treat f of x as a matrix of, or a vector of f values, and a matrix of x, or an array of x values, and an array of f values. That is, we literally draw arrows over f and x to signify that we now pass in a, a vector of x to each function argument. <coughs> so for example, suppose we had f of x, y equals 0, and another function g of x, y equals 0. So this is two equations in the two unknowns, x and y. Suppose we have for our functions f of x, y is x plus 2y, and g of x, y equals sine x divided by y. So in general, each function can be a function of both unknowns. That's why we write f of x, y, and then how it's dependent on x and y. And the same for g of x, y. It doesn't mean that both functions have to depend on all of the uh, unknowns but only that in general it can. So we would write these in vector form as instead of f and g we would write f0 and f1 and instead of x and y we would write x0 and x1. That is the components of an f vector would be the, function, the first function and the second function. So here we're writing f0 which is a function of x0 and x1 equals x0 plus 2x1 and then f1 which is a function of x0 and x1 equals sine of x0 divided by x1 and then if we write this in uh, matrix form we can see uh, the same thing where we've just added brackets in here or in vector notation we say that this is the vector f which is a function of the vector y is has these components here. This is to say that um, we pass in a vector and we get out a vector. So when we write this function we're going to pass in an array and we're going to return an array where the array that we pass in has elements x0, x1, x2, x3 which will be our unknowns and what we return will be a vector of functions f0, f1, f2, f3, etc. that we're trying to make each separately equal 0. We solve this problem just like for the one-dimensional case. We first define the function. It takes an array of unknowns and returns an array of function values. And then we use the same solver where we give an initial guess, which is the vector of unknown values for a guess. So here we'll, we'll solve this with the same uh, two equations we're looking at above. And we simply define the function def f of x. In this case, I'm going to be returning a vector. So I'm going to initialize that vector and call it y. You can call it anything you want. So I'm calling it y equals np dot zeros. And then I'm going to make it the same size as my x array. So the number of zeros will be the same size as the number of x values. And then I simply fill in the components of y. So the first component would be the, the f 
function, or f0, and the second component of y, y1, will be the g function. So we simply write y0 equals x0 plus 2x1, that's this function, and y1 equals sine of x0 divided by x1, and that's this function, or this function here. <laughs> Then once we have the array of f values, we simply return that array as the function. Then we need an initial guess. Here I'm guessing 1 and 1, and there's two unknowns, so x0 is an array. 1 is the unknown for x sub 0, and 1 is the unknown for, or the guess for x sub 1. And then we call the same function. So now x equals f solve, the function that I'm trying to solve, and my vector of initial guesses. So the syntax is exactly the same. And then once we've, we've set x, we can print it out to the screen, and we can also evaluate the function to verify that both values are n nearly zero, and in fact that's exactly what we get. So here we have the solution x and the solution f of x.